uh, a little segue as well. I'd, I'd love to hear um, your experiences seeing satellites, okay? And this is something you can see for yourself as well. I think satellites is one of those things that's pretty irrefutable. Uh, global positioning system, triangulation, all this. Uh, it, it, it's not possible without satellites, and you can see them yourself, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Oh, absolutely. I, I, lost, I, I couldn't tell you how many satellites I've seen. I've long, long lost count. Uh, but I've, you know, obviously I've seen the space station. I've got a number of videos on my YouTube channel of the space station orbiting the Earth, uh, seen through my telescope. Uh, I tracked the space shuttle on the final space shuttle mission, STS-135, as it was docked to ISS. I was one of the last people to see it docked to the space station and in broad daylight because the station's that bright. Uh, you can see geostationary satellites. I've seen all the direct TV satellites uh, that you can see from uh, North America. Uh, you can see them sitting there stationary. I can literally switch the power off on the telescope and they will remain perfectly stationary with no tracking because they're at, at a geostationary orbit. They're orbiting the Earth far enough that their orbital period is exactly equal to Earth's rotation. Right. They can remain stationary because uh, orbital velocity is with respect to uh, the center of the Earth as if it weren't moving. Uh, it doesn't matter that the Earth is rotating. So if you pick the right distance from the Earth, the, the semi-major axis, the width of an orbit, determines how quickly you go around the parent body. And so if you pick the right distance from the parent body, you can match that parent body's rotation. And that's how geostationary satellites work. They don't work on a flat Earth, obviously. They'd fall right out of the sky. They'd... Now, was that picture that you were showing before there, that's one that you took of a satellite? With the blue background? The first one, the blue one. The blue background, that's mine. Okay. Uh, that's...
hundreds of calls a month uh, where guys cannot re-verify their data. One of the common issues is that we see is the Coriolis effect. As the bullet leaves the, the barrel of the gun, the earth is still rotating and the bullet is not rotating with the earth. So it actually rotates from the west to the east. So what that's gonna do to our targets is, is if you're shooting west, your target's gonna rotate up and towards us, which is gonna cause the bullets to hit lower. And if you're facing east, the target's going to be dropping and slightly moving away, which is gonna cause the hits to be higher. The motion from the Earth's rotation can be split into two components, one that is in the direction of the bullet's flight and one that is perpendicular to the bullet's flight in the vertical direction. In Wyoming, the vertical speed of the target is approximately 2.7 inches per second. This will vary with latitude becoming greater at the equator. On the surface of the Earth, the only indication our planet is rotating is in the observation of the sun during the day and the stars during the night. Every day the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, but we are completely unaware that we are traveling to the east at hundreds of miles per hour. Now what if we were to have two people sit on opposite sides of the merry-go-round and try to throw a ball to one another? You can see that as the ball leaves the hands of the person throwing it, it becomes independent of the rotation of the merry-go-round and therefore follows a straight path. But because the person trying to catch the ball is still rotating with the merry-go-round, they are quickly moved out of the ball's intended path. Because the merry-go-round is spinning counterclockwise, this deflection is to the right. If it were spinning clockwise, the deflection would be to the left. Now, to an observer above the merry-go-round, the path of the ball appears straight. However, to people on the merry-go-round, the path of the ball curves to the right of the intended motion. This also demonstrates how air movement on the Earth's surface can be deflected by the Earth's rotation, a phenomenon called the Coriolis effect. Watch as Amanda pushes the ball out to the center and it makes a complete circle back to her other side. Some important facts about Coriolis force. First, the Coriolis force causes objects to deflect to the right of their intended path in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. This is why low pressure systems like hurricanes and extratropical cyclones circulate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Third, the strength of the deflection is proportionate to the speed. For example, the faster an airplane flies, the more the pilot must adjust the flight track to account for the Coriolis force. Yeah!